Hello and welcome to another tutorial here at CapEx Productions. My name is David. Today I'm super excited. It seems like I'm always excited in these tutorials. I am. <laughs> but particularly so today because we're looking at how to play Chateau by Joe. I really, really appreciate this song because it reminds me of a song I listened to growing up by Radiohead, maybe a little bit before some of your time. I'm a Same chord progression, exactly the same chord progression at the beginning, and the intro actually sounds just like this song. So having a little bit of nostalgia listening to this song. Uh, this tutorial, I'm going to break down everything you need to know. I've got the tabs, I've got the chords, it's all here. If you want a PDF of the chords and the tabs, check the description below, that'll take you to Patreon. And by supporting me on Patreon, you'd get access not only to this, but just so much other guitar content. Guys, it's really, really worth it. Of course, you don't need to because everything is going to be in this tutorial. All right, let's get this party started. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is take your capo, if you have one, and put it on the seventh fret. Now, if for some reason you don't have a capo, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. You can play this without one, uh, but you're going to have a little bit of a difference in the sound because it's in a different key. Still sounds nice, but yeah, obviously it's a lot lower. So you need to have your capo on the seventh fret. My capo is all the way over there now. So I'm going to edit myself into the future and go get it. Okay. Thank you. Final cut. <laughs> uh, apart from this standard tuning, you don't have to do anything funky with the strings. At the beginning of the song, you will hear a little bit of like a wobbling effect, maybe almost like a detuned effect that they slap onto the guitar. We're not going to worry about any of that because we don't have electric guitars. If you've got an electric guitar, by all means, experiment with the effects, maybe some chorus, reverb, all that jazz that you find in indie and in indie songs. But I'm just um, concerned with the notes for today. So let's take a look at the intro. I'm going to play through it once and then break down what I'm doing with the left and right hands. Two, three, four. There you have it. So essentially four shapes um, revolving around C, E7, F major seven, and the tricky bar chord F minor. So those are the shapes that are involved with the left hand. And of course with the right hand, I'm gonna be using my fingers to pluck the strings. Now, if you have a guitar pick, you are absolutely welcome to use a guitar pick to, um, to pluck the strings, but I recommend, it's, this is actually a great exercise to get a little bit of finger style technique going. So I'd encourage you to try with your fingers. What I start off with my left hand is just a basic generic C major chord. And then I'm gonna use my thumb index middle index to start off. Just to get those first four notes. And then my ring finger is gonna hit the open string. And then I'm gonna come down in a really like logical way with my right hand, ring finger, middle finger, index, thumb, da, 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 da. And the great part about this is my left hand doesn't have to do anything at all. It just holds the C the whole time. All right, so that's the first bar. I think that's quite straightforward. If you use a guitar pick, it'll look a little bit like that in terms of the technique. Uh, let's look at bar two. So here we have this E7 shape. Now, this is a little tricky because there's a bit of a slide here. So we're going to go from the first fret and we're going to slide into the second fret. That's the trick is to kind of slide into the shape, sliding from your second finger from the first fret to the second fret. And then your first finger is going to come down on the third string. And the right hand, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, Middle, middle, index, thumb. That's what I'm doing there. If you're using a guitar pick, maybe something like this. 
You can do like a little bit of alternating, especially between the third and the second string. Down, up, down, up, up, down, down. You can kind of decide which direction you want to go with that. Then, bar three, we're going to have another slide, but actually here, instead of doing a slide, we're going to do a hammer on. We're going to hammer on with our second finger to our third finger, from the second fret to the third fret. And then we're going to get into this very comfortable one, two, three shape for the F major seventh, uh, F major seventh chord. And then here, the, the right hand pattern is also very simple. It starts off with our thumb, index, middle, index, ring, middle, index, thumb. So just like bar one, at the end, the last four notes, we're going to have ring finger, middle finger, index, thumb. That's a really easy way to remember with the right hand. Now you might be tempted to just use your first finger or your middle finger. Don't do that, please. <laughs> that is really bad technique. I'll tell you what, this is the rule. You get to do that if you're not interested in progressing. If you just want to play this song and then put your guitar down for a year, by all means, just use one finger, it's not a big deal. But if you want to get better, really try and make sure you stick to some of these rules because it's going to improve your playing and it's going to mean that you are a little bit better equipped when you play stuff that's harder. Bar four, speaking of harder, <laughs> F minor, this is where things get really, really tricky. And that's really what makes this piece a little bit more geared towards intermediate than beginner. So this is a good exercise to practice a bar chord here. You're going to take your third finger and put it on the third fret of the fourth string. And then your first finger is going to do the hard work here, barring down on the first frets. Now for me, you'll notice actually bar all of the, the notes on the first fret. And that for me, feels more stable with my left hand. Some people will just say, well, just bar down the notes that you need to bar down, which is completely good argument. But for me, that feels a little less stable than just having my first finger across all of the strings. I feel like I'm not gonna make a mistake this way. So you can experiment and see which is more accurate for you because that's kind of more important. Um, and then the trick really is getting your pinky finger on the third fret and then pulling your pinky finger off onto the first fret. That's kind of the hardest part right there. If you stick that, you're well on your way. What I would do if you get to this part and you're really struggling, the bars hurting your first finger and it just feels like it's not working, practice in short intervals. Think of it like strength training with your left hand. Push hard and then recover. Don't sit there for an hour like breaking your hand. That's really not gonna do you any favors. What you wanna do is just push for like a few minutes, really strengthen your hand and then uh, allow your hand a little bit of a break um, and then come back to it. So allow yourself to rest often when you're practicing these bar chords, especially if you're a beginner. All right, that is my little breakdown of the intro. Hopefully this was helpful. All right, let's take a look at the first chord progression. Now the first chord progression is the one that accompanies the intro that we just did like a second ago. C, E7, F, F minor. That's gonna be the intro as well as the beginning of the first verse. So let me play through it once and then I'll break down what I'm doing with the left and right hand. Two, three, four. So let's take a look at those chords together from the C. That's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you know how to play a C major chord. One, two, and three. On the second, fourth, and fifth strings. That's pretty straightforward. Make sure that you're strumming just from the fifth string with your right hand because this low, low note is really a part of the chord here. Then the next chord is an E7. Now this E7 shape is not the same as the shape that we used in the intro, if you went through the intro. We're just gonna play a simple E7 which is an E major chord without your third finger. So there's a bit of a gap there. The third chord is an F major chord. Here in the intro, we played an F major seventh, this little gap here. We, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna play a full F major chord. Again, a good opportunity to practice your bar chords. One of the things you'll notice in between the E7 and the F, what I do 
is I give myself a little bit of a chance to prepare. So as I'm holding, letting this E7 ring, because there isn't much of a strumming pattern, I can just let it ring. And while it's ringing out, I can get my second finger, my third finger, and my pinky finger ready. So when it's time for the F, I'm basically two thirds of the way there. All I have to do is slap down my first finger and get the bar. And if you use that little hack, you're gonna be able to change comfortably from the E7 to the F. Let me do that again. From the E7, one, two, three, four. By the time I get to the fourth beat, right? Each chord is lasts for like four beats. My, all of my fingers are ready. And then my first finger can come down nice and comfortably. And then all you have to do to get from the F major to the F minor is just lift up your second finger. One of the things I like to do when I'm playing F minor chord is use my second finger to get what I call the Spock shape. <laughs> Live long and prosper, those of you guys who are Star Trek fans. Uh, and this way, your first and second finger are kind of working together to support the bar, and your third finger, your pinky finger, can do their thing. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, essentially the, the first chord progression. Okay, let's take a listen to the second progression. Two, three, four. And that leads into the chorus. So that part is just the second part of the verse. Now let's take a look from the F. After you've played the F minor from the previous section, you're going to go back to F and this is the second progression, which is a very simple change. You don't have to really think about that. All you have to do is put your second finger down and then we're going to slide back to E minor. Now this change to E minor is actually very simple if you do it the right way. It's quite tempting with E minor just to slap whatever fingers are free. <laughs> what I like to do here is get used to the shape between E minor using my last two fingers instead of like my middle two or my first two. And you'll see why in a moment getting used to this change um, is going to be important. So F, two, three, four. Here the changes are a little bit faster. So each chord lasts for two counts. Um, one, two, three, the D comes a little bit early. Okay, so just watch that change. Two, and then you're gonna hold the D a little bit longer. And then just before we get to the F, we're gonna slip in another E minor. And here, this E minor is so short, and this is why it's important that we use our last two fingers to play the E minor. Because that change needs to be snappy, and it's gonna be difficult if we're using our first two fingers to suddenly try and get our left hand in position. Easier is just to use the last two fingers, slide them up one fret, and you're in business. So that's my rec my professional recommendation. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, the other chords are, I think, quite straightforward. What's important is to maybe listen through the song and get used to where the changes come to make sure they're nice and snappy, especially those chords that come a little bit earlier. For example, this D. Yeah, it's quite easy to be like, oh, I'll just play it a little bit slower, but actually it needs to come a little bit earlier. All right, let's take a look at the chorus. Two, three, four. What a progression that is. Some really surprising chords there, especially this E flat, which I think is quite a, an interesting uh, inclusion there. So I think the uh, main difference with the chorus that we need to watch out for is the strumming pattern. You'll notice here I actually have a bit of a strumming pattern going, whereas in the previous chord progressions, you're just letting the chords ring and arriving at the next chord in time. That's basically all you have to worry about. But here I'm following the vocal line. Sorry, I'm playing a little bit faster, but you get the idea. 
So um, I think this just creates a little bit of interest, if you're, especially if you're doing a cover and you want to make um, the song not get too kind of monotonous, you can include like a little bit of a different strumming pattern for the chorus, which I, I think works. Okay, so um, the uh, important chord change really is getting from the C major 7th, which is actually pretty straightforward, to the C7, where your second, third finger are just staying down, your first finger and your pinky finger are basically getting added to the chord shape, which I don't think is too difficult. Then the tough part is this E flat. Now, if you are playing on a, an acoustic guitar, you probably might be at risk of running out of frets here because this is on the 13th, 12th and 11th fret, this E flat chord, if we're including the kappa, right? So this might be a little bit of a stretch, but it's just the one chord. And then we're gonna hop back down for an F and then to a C. There were some other options for this E flat chord, but I just did not like refiguring it this way. I think this is a little bit tricky. But there are some options, but I think this is probably the easiest. All you're doing is just a C major shape. And then you're sliding back down from an F then to a regular C major. So that's probably the place to practice the most because it can be a little bit tricky, especially at speed. Although, fortunately, the tempo is a little bit slow, so you, you have time. And then that chord progression repeats. Don't forget to start with a C major 7th. So at the end, you're going to play C, regular C, and then you're going to start with a C major 7th, which is just a C without your first finger. Okay, that covers the entire song. I really hope that this tutorial was helpful and instructive in some way. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you so much, and bye-bye.